Hey, what is up guys? It is Jared the Tech Venture here with a second video, version number two, way better than version number one. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. I mean, just to put it into perspective, do you remember the first Hulk movie? The one with Eric Bana in it? Yeah, neither neither do I. It was it was a snooze fest. I slept through it. But then the second movie was way better, more action, more explosions. It was all around way better. That's somewhat like my video, except I don't have the explosions. You know, it's not like I can blow up an iPhone. All I have is a lighter, right? Just kidding, guys. No exploding iPhones in this video. At least. I, I hope not. We'll find out in the review. And we're not here to review any superhero movies either. We're here to review the iPhone 10. So without further ado, let's get into it right after this intro. Roll it. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of Apple's 10th anniversary edition iPhone. And for good reason. This is probably the most beautifully designed device I have seen from Apple, both inside and out. I mean, if you've seen the iFixit teardown, you probably know what I'm talking about. Those rounded stainless steel corners aren't an eyesore and provide just enough grip when holding the device. But what really stands out is that gorgeous 5.8 inch display spanning the entire device. I mean, the front is pretty much all display. You can't really argue with that. There are several slim bezel phones available, such as the Note 8, the Essential phone, and the Pixel 2 XL. But I've not seen a better screen to body ratio in a device so slim, yet so powerful. And it's also the perfect amount of screen complemented with the perfect amount of bezel. My experience with the Galaxy S7 kind of left a sour taste in my mouth when it came to bezel-less phones. Accidental touches and gestures were pretty much my main gripe with that device, alongside the fact that there were no tempered glass screen protectors that wouldn't peel around the edges. Apple got it right when they designed this iPhone for the average user. That Samsung panel looks great, and the colors are just as accurate if not better when compared to previous iPhone iterations. With this great display comes a great new feature in iOS 11 called True Tone Display. This is Apple's attempt at making the colors more accurate and consistent regardless of the ambient lighting. This definitely makes it a lot easier on the eyes, but I found that the display looked a little bit better when it was actually turned off. For example, I was in a room with yellow lighting and the display kind of took on a yellowish tint, making it look a little bit dull and uninspiring. But that's the beauty of it. You can turn that feature off if you really want. The look and feel of a smartphone is one of the most principal factors when considering a device. It's also a little bit tricky to get it just right. I mean, some people like big devices and others like them small. No, not, not that small. I guess that's why more and more companies are giving us a choice between a standard version and a plus size. For example, the iPhone, iPhone Plus, Pixel and the Pixel XL. You kind of get where I'm going with this. But it's not too often that a company can get the form factor and the specs on a device just right. I mean, I, I don't know why, but at least till now. The iPhone X is exactly that. Powerful specs in a small and easy to hold package. The edges are smooth, but not at all that slippery, at least in my hand and compared to other devices I've held. What continuously blows me away is the fact that Apple was able to shove a 5.8 inch display in a body that is substantially smaller than say the Pixel 2 XL, which only has a display size 0.2 inches bigger. And with no home button, you might think it's a little hard getting used to the device, but I found that quite the opposite. The gestures to swipe back, open up your home screen, open up the app switcher, get around the OS in general, I mean, I gotta say Apple has outdone themselves. It only took me about a day to get used to the gestures, and I can tell you with 100% confidence, I do not miss the home button one bit. So let's talk about that camera. So the iPhone houses a 12 megapixel camera system on the back, which is great in low light and allow you to get that two times optical zoom without any distortion. 
The optical image stabilization built into the phone is also great when you got a shaky hand or are trying to film a bumpy ride, like this one. You can record video in 4K on this device at a maximum of 60 frames per second or 1080p at 240 frames per second, which allow for super smooth slow-mo action. I put the iPhone up against the Pixel 2 XL just to compare what it would look like. I mean, here's a couple shots just side by side, and I tried to make it as scientifically controlled as possible. So hopefully you guys will be able to see a difference. To me, it looks like the Pixel 2 XL has a bit of an edge up on the iPhone. But I mean, I can say it's definitely a top contender when it comes to camera phones. The colors pop, the details of everything in the picture is perfect, and the HDR works exceptionally well. Long story short, when buying this, the Pixel 2 or even the Note 8, you will have the best camera phone in your pocket, hands down. Trust me. Unfortunately though, I can't really say the same for the front-facing camera on the iPhone X. I mean, it's not bad by any stretch, but in this day and age of selfie obsessions, Apple should have nailed this one in the park. But the front-facing camera is not nearly as good as that on the Pixel 2 XL. I found it suffered tremendously in low-light scenarios, and the portrait mode option on it was, well, a bit subpar. I mean, you can kind of tell in these photos. So let's talk battery life. The battery life on this iPhone is pretty much what you would expect it to be. It got me through a whole day of recording videos, uh, navigating through apps like Snapchat and Facebook and any social media app you can pretty much think of. I did some hotspot tethering as well too and I did some Bluetooth streaming. So I really put it through its paces and at the end of the day, not once did I have to look at the battery percentage and worry about a charger. And if you saw the teardown on this phone, you'll be just as amazed as I am considering that Apple didn't really have much space to work with when it came to the battery. They designed it really well, and I think they gave us the maximum battery life that they possibly could. So, thanks a lot, Apple. I appreciate that. The iPhone X and iOS 11 in general are packed with a ton of features right out of the box. First, let's talk about that Face ID. I wasn't too keen on the idea of having no fingerprint sensor, and there were mixed reactions as to how good this Face ID feature would be when the phone was released. After weeks of testing it under various conditions though, I can safely say that this is the future. It's highly accurate and super quick most of the time. I mean, I did have some issues unlocking it when my face was partially covered or it was in landscape mode, but for the most part, it was flawless. There were times when I actually missed the home button when, say, I was keeping it on my desk and I wanted to just unlock it without having to lift it up. However, there were more times where Face ID made me forget about that ancient fingerprint technology, such as when my hands were wet or I had gloves on. Not to mention, since it replaces Touch ID in the entire operating system, pretty much all the apps that use fingerprint authentication will work right out of the box. Oh, and one more thing. I love how the notification content will remain hidden until after it detects your face. That's pretty cool. But those sensors housed in the notch at the front of the device isn't just used for Face ID. Which brings me to the next fun part of this device. Animojis. The animated emojis, or animojis as Apple likes to call it, doesn't provide much in terms of productivity, but it's a fun way to send animated messages to your friends and maybe annoy them a little. I found the accuracy of the facial recognition to be a little bit finicky in low light. I mean, it wouldn't always pick up the face I was trying to make, but that will improve with software updates over time. And as the sensors get better, the next iPhone will have better facial recognition. It's just how technology works. So Apple kind of opted for the glass back on the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 this year. And, I mean, with recent reports of the glass back cracking pretty easily, I'm not much of a fan. But it's not all there for aesthetics. There was a method to their madness since both of these new devices come with wireless charging. A first time for the iPhone. The feature worked great when I used it for wireless charging. I mean, I used an OEM Samsung wireless charger and had no issues juicing up the device. One thing to note, the iPhone does come with fast charging, just not out of the box. You're going to have to buy an extra fast charger for that. 
So the speakers on the phone aren't both front facing, but they're pretty damn impressive. I put it at full volume and had no issues with static or distortion. They were clear and loud and could definitely hold their own if you forgot to bring along that Bluetooth speaker or your headphone dongle. Yeah, no headphones, but you probably knew that already, right? The performance on this device is no slouch at all. I mean, what do you expect, right? The A11 Bionic chip in this phone is pretty much a beast. It handles everything I threw at it, even the most intense 3D games. But that's not only thanks to the hardware, but a lot of the software optimizations we have come to know and love in iOS. The great thing about this iPhone is that you know the hardware incorporated in the device is pretty much capable of giving you the best experience possible. So Apple stuffed this device with hardware capable of powering that face ID sensor, the camera optics, and even the post-processing around the camera. Also, the AI as well too, that's built around Siri. When it comes to performance, this device is pretty much capable of doing it all. And when we're talking about the phone, we don't wanna forget about its main purpose as a phone. And I got you covered on that front. Reception on the phone was excellent and had no issues with call drops or quality. The speaker was loud and clear and people on the other end had no issues hearing me. There isn't much that I don't like about the iPhone 10, but Every phone does have their flaws. I mean, even if you're dropping 10 bills and some of your non-vital organs on it, I mean, you're gonna have some problems, trust me. Some of these complaints can be fixed with a software update and a lot of them are just not that big of a deal, but I feel like I have to mention them. Number one, the apps aren't all that optimized for full screen usage. I mean, just yet. Apps like Google Play Music, Google Maps, and even the McDonald's app, they weren't optimized for full screen use. And with a little more time, all the apps that you probably use on a daily basis will be updated to utilize that full 5.8 inch display. I mean, just give it some time. Number two, the control center is now at the top edge of the device, alongside with the notification pane. And I mean, this can kind of be a pain. In all seriousness though, it's kind of cumbersome. I find myself swiping down from the right hand side and not always getting the control panel. I'm sometimes getting the notification shade and vice versa. And RIP to that battery percentage at a glance. We no longer get to see that unless you swipe down from the control panel. I kind of see why Apple omitted that. It's because the notch is there and it's in the way. But I mean, they could have just put it on the home screen with the time and the weather. I wanna see that information just when I glance at my phone. I don't wanna to have to swipe down every single time. Number three, iOS 11 has been the worst iteration of iOS I have seen since its inception, actually. I mean, I haven't had as many issues as I've had in this version of iOS ever. Apps force close a lot, and I'm just gonna go out there and say it, and some of you Apple fans might hate me for this, but some of the Android phones today are a lot more stable than iOS 11. Um, Samsung, not so much. I don't, I don't even know why this is here. But like I stated previously, guys, the iPhone has some of the best hardware in the industry. And hopefully Apple will one day find its way back to that software and hardware cohesiveness that it was once known for in the past. Here's to hoping. So my final thoughts on this device. If you were planning on dropping $1,000 on this phone, or a phone in general, this device should definitely be at the top of your list. Although it has some small issues like the apps not being completely optimized for the display and even the questionable stability of iOS 11, that's not a big deal. These are issues that will more than likely be fixed in a future update. And more importantly, they can be fixed without you having to go buy a new phone. The hardware is amazing and for the most part, it's future-proof. It'll last you a good two to three years. That's pretty much the term of a subsidized plan if you chose to go that route. I mean, for me, I would probably go with the 256 gigabyte version, mainly because in this day and age of 4K video recording and higher quality photos and even offline music listening, you're gonna fill that 64 gigabytes pretty fast. But if you feel you aren't much of a photographer and have a continuous internet connection available, 
I mean, the 64 gigabytes might just be enough. And for the love of all things tech, do not get the iPhone 8 if you have the option of getting the iPhone 10, at least right now. The iPhone 8 will probably see some pretty heavy discounts in the near future. I mean, just based on their previous sales records. Yeah, no one wanted the iPhone 8. They, they wanted the 10. But now that the 10 is out and you don't want to mortgage your house just to get it, but you still want at least the closest experience to it, I would say wait for the iPhone 8. It's probably going to be worth it. That has been my review, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more future content. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Just let me know. Are you planning on getting the iPhone 10 or do you already have it? And if you do have it, like, what do you like about the device? What don't you like? Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, when it comes to tech, Jared the Tech Venger is there. I got your back.